I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Latin America. With a lot of my viewers, or a lot of you are new, so thanks to the hundreds of new people who've joined in the last day or two, and with, with so many of my old viewers and new viewers who are joining here, suddenly becoming interested in potentially becoming expats and wondering what the future holds for them and looking at a lot of possibilities in life, a lot of people are starting to think about, and some of you have mentioned, the idea of simply giving up your American citizenship, foregoing any tax burden so you don't have to pay taxes anymore, and being able to be a citizen of the world. Well, I want to talk about this because I think there are some considerations you may not have taken into account and some factors that may not be something you're used to thinking about because there are things that are not super obvious about this process. And I just want to have a serious talk about whether this is a good choice for you. So let's talk about that right after the bump. First of all, it is a fantastically beautiful rainy day here in mid-November in Nicaragua. This is the end of the rainy season and the weather is fantastic. The air is nice and cool. We're in the 70s. It is comfy and the rain is light but stable and it's just, it sounds great. It looks great. It feels great. It's a great time to be here. I love the, the edges of the rainy season most in Nicaragua because we get such just it's gorgeous right and we've been outside like all day enjoying this weather so I had this comment because people are talking about tax regimes and how it's going to affect them and we just had a popular video where we were looking at the proposed tax changes coming in the United States of course they're proposed they haven't happened yet there's no guarantee that they're going to play out as projected but we need to understand what the projections mean so that we're ready to make decisions and someone made the comment I'm just going to or I can just uh you know uh, uh, revoke my American citizenship um, and then I don't have to worry about taxes and I can move around the world and do whatever. So I want to talk about this and I this is a serious discussion. So I, I encourage you uh, to really pay attention to this because a lot of people are going to be considering this. So there's a, there's a bunch of things we want to talk about. The first one is that the idea of giving up your citizenship is not something that you control. Anytime that you're an American and you have citizenship, the ability to revoke your citizenship is always at the discretion of the United States government. It is not something that you can simply say you're going to do and guarantee it will happen. If you request it, it goes to the United States government to decide if they will allow you to revoke or not. So in many cases you can, but you need to be aware that it is not a guarantee. The second thing is, in order to even attempt to give up your citizenship, you must have another citizenship in place. You are not allowed to become stateless. So even if the U.S. government was like, sure, we're going to let you revoke your citizenship and you requested to do it, if you don't have another citizenship in place, that's not an option. So for a lot of people, they may not realize that you must have one, and these are generally difficult to get. That doesn't mean you can't. And we've talked about this on the show a bit. There are some great places that you may want to have one. There's a lot of considerations when looking into passports. We'll do some videos talking about secondary passports for sure in the upcoming future because this is an important topic just in general. A lot of people looking for this information now, so we'll cover some of that absolutely. But it is very unlikely to be something that you can get really quickly and uh, you will just have it ready. For some of you, yes, you may already have a secondary passport. And generally, if you have one, it's always a consideration should you keep your primary passport or maybe your American passport's your second one. So those are things to think about. But for a lot of people who are just jumping into this, they may be like, oh, I'm just gonna give up my, my American citizenship and they haven't thought through where they plan to acquire additional citizenship. In some cases, it's simply a monetary question. You're basically able to buy it. It's super expensive and under normal circumstances. If you're going Going through more normal channels where you are becoming a resident, living someplace for a while, and eventually applying for citizenship. Normally, we expect that to take a number of years. Some places like Switzerland or something like a minimum of 12 years here in Nicaragua. Technically, it's only a minimum of five, but in practical sense, it's between 10 and 20 in most cases and so forth. So that's not something you just jump into. And then Part three, for a lot of people who are considering this, the reason that they want to do it is that the United States has an international uh, earned income, a global income tax regime, which that means is no matter where you live in the world is irrelevant to your tax status, right? As an American, you owe American taxes. Where you live is not part of that equation. Now, there are factors with where you live as to how much you owe. This can be a factor depending 
on many circumstances. So talk to your accountant, watch my videos on foreign earned income credits and so forth, and you'll get an idea of how you can reduce your tax burden or how it may be reduced by being an expat. And that's very good. The U.S actually has a pretty decent international tax regime for most people. It's not as onerous as it may seem, uh, but it does exist, and people who want to get away from it will often turn to the idea of giving up their American citizenship to no longer have that tax burden. And that sounds absolutely fantastic. If I'm not planning on returning to the United States, I don't plan on working in the United States, why would I keep something that causes me to have to pay taxes to the United States no matter where I live in the world, no matter what's going on in my life? Well, sure, you don't want to have to keep paying taxes under those circumstances. I totally understand. However, at the time that you renounce your American citizenship, <clears throat> there is a thing known as an exit tax. And this tax is assessed against all your worldly possessions and your future earnings. Now, it, it, it's a very complicated situation. It is not something you can just know exactly what it's going to be and predict very easily but the number is going to be enormous. For a lot of people, it's so large that they have no way to produce the tax payment necessary to renounce their citizenship. That alone can be a major burden. But importantly, the design of that is to make sure that you pay any and all taxes that you may someday have paid should you not renounce your citizenship. So while the U.S. allows you to renounce your citizenship, it doesn't really get you away from taxes, it just shifts them forward. You pay them an estimate up front. And then once you've renounced, then if you earn less in the future, you lose out. And if you earn more than projected in the future, you gain, right? So you may end up winning through this process. And it's mostly under your control. But this, this idea that you're simply not going to have to pay taxes by uh, exiting the U.S. completely is not real. That's that's not actually how it works. There is a massive tax burden tied to that to make sure that this is not something people would do for tax reasons. You may do it for political reasons. You may do it for familial reasons. You may do it for any number of, of personal reasons, and, and that's okay, but it's important to understand that it is designed to make sure that it is not a significant tax benefit uh, to revoke your citizenship. So if that's the thing that's that's pushing you to consider that option, consider that that probably is not going to work out as you're expecting. So that alone eliminates this as a reasonable option for most people. But there's a lot more to this that we need to discuss. So I want to dig into this quite a bit. I know for a lot of people who are considering leaving the United States, whether physically or want to talk about giving up their citizenship, they're doing so because they're expressing a current frustration with the state of things in the United States. This could be any number of things. I don't really want to dig into what those reasons might be, but we can imagine lots of different reasons, some of them financial, some of them not, that are pushing us in this direction or pushing you in this direction. I have no interest in giving up my citizenship. Uh, if I can help it, that's not something I want to have happen. And as we dig through this, I I think you'll understand why. So first of all, giving up your citizenship is a one-way street. This is a really big deal. And I don't think very many people anywhere ever really stop and think about all of the important things that they tie to their citizenship and how it affects them in their everyday life. You grow up with your citizenship, in my case, Americans, for a lot of you, American or Canadian. Uh, and, and those things are intrinsic aspects of your life, and we don't normally stop and think about how your uh, ability to travel to different places in the world, the way that you're able to access your own country, your ability to get back to your own family, uh, your ability to work in your, your native country, all those things. You don't really think about how they're tied to your citizenship and Often when we're thinking about, well, I'm just going to renounce my citizenship, generally it means you're planning on living abroad, but you may not have thought through your ability to work online, access to retirement resources, social security, um, medical care, uh, which, which may be a minor one. But a lot of these things, they still exist as factors. And one of the biggest is the right to travel. So let's start with that. As an American, I have one of the strongest abilities to travel and live abroad of anyone anywhere in the world. It's not the absolute most powerful passport. Spain recently had that. Denmark recently had that. But the American passport is a really powerful one worldwide. It gives you the ability to fly and travel through nearly any country with minimal effort. Some places still require extra visas or so forth, but they're really minimal 
um, compared to nearly any other countries. And if you're going to be doing anything in the Western Hemisphere where you're flying through or near uh, Latin America, chances are many times your flights are going to potentially pass through Miami, Houston, Los Angeles. And if you don't have the right to travel through one of those airports, that can really curtail your ability to travel or really increase the cost of your travel. Those are really important options that people don't generally think about. Now, an extreme example, I live here in Nicaragua. Nicaraguans with their passports are not allowed to use the United States airports for transit. Some places in the Western Hemisphere do have that right, and it's pretty straightforward, but most of the countries in the region don't just naturally have that right. Now, Nicaraguans have an extremely difficult time getting permission to do so. If you're coming from Mexico, it's much easier to do so, but even Mexican citizens can't just fly through U.S. airports, right? Any airline that uses the United States in any fashion on a leg of a journey could make entire swaths of the world unable to transit through unless they're able to get a visa. And that makes it really time consuming and costly to do those things. As an American with an American passport, I've never had to think about flying nearly anywhere in the world. I can fly through anywhere in South America, anywhere in Europe, most places in Asia, most places in Africa, and definitely US and Canada without any paperwork ahead of time and never having to stop and question, am I allowed to go to this airport? That is an entire range of problems that Americans generally don't have to think about, but people from most of the world do, and it really impacts them. It, in some cases, it just makes makes flying a bit more expensive or cumbersome. But for a lot of people, like Nicaraguans, it essentially bans them from travel altogether. The in enormous cost and enormous amount of effort that goes into trying to transit to another country is often overwhelming. And, it, and even if you technically could travel in an emergency, the practical ability to do so basically doesn't exist. So these are really important considerations. Now, yes, if you're going to have a second passport, obviously you have to have one to give up your citizenship. But whatever passport you're going to have, you need to consider just how powerful it's going to be. Is it going to allow you to travel the places that you want to go when they're different than the ones you're used to? And most of us are very upset when we lose the ability to go to places we've always been able to go. It is a loss of something we've had. People who have European passports generally don't sense this loss uh, when not able to fly through the U.S. without a little bit of extra paperwork. But Americans who've always been able to do that can be very emotionally impactful and very surprising in ways you're just not expecting. And it's far more than just your ability to travel through the United States. Your ability to go and visit many countries, your ability to stay long term, your ability to acquire residency, and in some cases, even your ability to move that residency into citizenship are often powered by your American passport. So this is rarely a power that you want to give up. Of course, if you have already acquired all those things, it is an option. But it is a flexibility that you currently have that you would be giving up for the rest of your life. And that is a very significant one. Most people would do nearly anything to acquire an American passport. It's one of the world's most powerful, and it is very diverse compared to other powerful passports. If you're comparing it to a Mexican or a Spanish passport, the U.S. passport is not necessarily stronger, but it is very different than either of those. And if you were to acquire two passports, then it is part of a portfolio you would certainly want to have. People who are putting together passport portfolios list American and European passports at the absolute top of the things that they want to acquire. Generally, having those two is considered winning the passport lotto and gives you nearly all the flexibility you could have in the world. There are still ways to get slightly more, but that is about as good as it gets. It's hard to explain just how deep as an expat your power will be curtailed by not having that American passport. And it could affect you in ways that you really don't foresee, such as your ability to invest in other countries. But that also brings us to being an American gives you some of the most powerful banking, business, and job market opportunities anywhere in the world. All over the world, people wish that they had access to the U.S. market, even if they're not going to live there, the ability to open a bank account there, the ability to get a phone number there, the ability to uh, visit and stay whenever necessary, of course, and the ability to work even if remotely, to jobs in the United States is a really big deal, plus the ability, of course, to open your own business in the United States and maybe work for that or invest through that or whatever. Now, 
even if you're not an American citizen, if you're not an American passport holder, some of those things still exist as options for you. You can, for example, open an American business without being an American. That's absolutely okay. But it's more difficult. You have fewer flexibilities and in many cases, fewer protections, which another thing that is important, American citizens enjoy more protections around the world than non-American citizens. In some countries, there is simply some deference given to those with American passports. And again, this is one of those things that you don't really realize or think about until you've lived abroad and had to use your American passport and realize that you're being protected by your passport. When I spend time in El Salvador or Guatemala, it's really noticeable that I get different treatment than locals by using my American passport. And that's not a great thing in many cases, but it is reality. And you don't necessarily have to use that passport. So if it carries a negative connotation, you can use a different passport. And when it carries a positive connotation, you can use it. But these are big factors, things that can really improve your life, protect your family, give you more flexibility, give you more power. It is rare that you would want to voluntarily give them up. And so I highly recommend that you very carefully consider the desire to give up an American passport or American citizenship. These are really heavily desired things. I understand that some of you are frustrated, some of you are scared, some of you see immense change coming. You see a different future than you envisioned for yourself in the past. You are, for any number of reasons, thinking that severing ties to the United States may be something that works for you. And for a very small number of you, perhaps it will make sense. But for most of you, it is, first of all, a pipe dream that you will never be able to achieve even if you attempt to do so. So the effort or the planning around that could be very negative because it could be it could be a waste of your time and resources thinking that this is a path you can go down when you can't even entertain it. But for those who could inaction it, those who could put together enough pieces, come up with enough money to pay off the exit tax, who are able to acquire another passport, who are able to put up with the limitations and the lack of flexibility, for those of you who could do it, very, very carefully consider just how many things you may have never thought about in your life, either that you think you might want to do someday, flexibility you want to pass on to your children, options and protections that you never thought about. Would you be really happy having given those up, all four tax advantages that probably don't matter. And there's yet another factor, and that is as much as you may be frustrated with or not believe in the power of your vote, and I am hardly one that's going to go out and promote the idea that everyone should vote or that the vote is incredibly useful, but it is a small amount of power that you do have. And even as an expat, you have the right to vote in local, state, and national elections and Maybe it's not something you exercise currently, but the option, the ability to do so is something that you would also be giving up. And if everybody who is passionate and cares about their country gives that up, that gives more voice to those who are looking to do damage or doing things that you don't want them to do. So don't just knee jerk, give up all power. Don't just give in. Don't just hand it all over and say, I'm giving up my benefits, I'm giving up my, my everything, because you think somehow that that's going to be super beneficial to you. Make sure that if you're going to do that, you do your research and you think very, very critically. It should never be an emotional reaction. It is an incredibly big decision to make and one that I've never personally known any person that would actually benefit by giving up their citizenship. That is, it sounds interesting, it sounds potentially powerful when you learn that your global income for the rest of your life and your children's lives will always be taxable by the United States. It feels like you just have to give up your citizenship as a natural reaction. And I totally understand why that emotional response happens, why that feels like a logical progression. But in 99.999999% of the time, it is not what is going to do the right thing for you. It is going to hurt you. It is not going to send a message to America. It is not going to make some kind of difference. It is not a passive way of sending a vote. It is simply throwing away the voice that you have today and throwing away the power that you have to make a difference tomorrow. I encourage you to reconsider going down this path. Instead, yes, 
potentially consider getting a second passport. Look at how you can live abroad. Look at tax regime locations that work in your favor. Use this time to study what the options are. There are wonderful places around the world where your money, your time, your ability to work as an American will go farther than anywhere else. And you can still sever nearly all ties with the United States if that's what you want to do without having to throw away your passport and giving up all of the power and flexibility that you have today. I don't want my viewers to go out and hurt themselves. I don't want you to, to cut off your nose to spite your face, right? We want you to do the right thing for you and your families. And we have a lot of resources here on this channel. I encourage you to watch. We have shows about your taxes, about your residency, about citizenships, about the, the power of the expat and how being able to move from country to country gives you all kinds of benefits. And we do breakdowns of different countries. Now, I'm based in Latin America, so mostly we talk about Latin America here, but I have lived across Europe. I've worked around the world. I've lived in eight countries. I've traveled to many places, and we're always investigating more places. And our sister channel, Latin American Living, also digs into uh, living and, and moving abroad and working throughout the region as well. And, and we go into um, options for income and investment and all kinds of things. And so uh, I think there's a lot of resources out there and there's a lot of paths that you can potentially take that don't require you to burn the bridges uh, that you have. You will be sorry if you take a momentary uh, situation in the United States, whether it's financial or political, whatever, and throw away your flexibility for the future because you're frustrated with the way things are today, the way they've been for the last few years, the way you perceive they're going to be in the foreseeable future, or the way that you think things are going to change. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons to be worried about America based on its future projections, based on the way things have been in the past, the way that other countries have played out over time. I totally understand. It's frustrating and scary, and change happens, and change is always scary. And new technologies are going to disrupt the way that we work, and we have to adapt Giving up your flexibility is the worst reaction to seeing the need to adapt for the future. Keeping your American citizenship will only help you be better prepared and better positioned to take advantage of or protect yourself against whatever the future is going to hold for America, for the world. And uh, that's what we want is the best for all of you. So. Thank you for joining me. Like and subscribe. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you'd like to help support the work that we do here, I'm going to have a link up here. It's buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. It's basically like Patreon and helps support the work we do here. We don't sell anything. We don't have any services to sell to you. This is purely an information channel. I'm very passionate about the ability for people to become expats. I think it's a, it's a wonderful, whether it's a temporary thing or a lifestyle that you're looking at moving into and working abroad. And as we saw recently, there are a lot of changes happening in the United States that make being, or we believe are going to make being an expat even more beneficial, even more powerful. And so these are, are great things for Americans and Canadians. Both countries are moving in a direction where larger percentages of their population being expats is is a likely future and we want to make that as as powerful of a choice and intentional as a choice as it can be for you we also have an entire guide series that we're putting together on how to become an expat here on the channel i encourage you, we have thousands of videos about expatting in general, about um, Americans and their ability to work abroad, about Latin America, about Nicaragua specifically, which for those of you who are just discovering this channel and this material, Nicaragua is one of the most unique and powerful places that you could look at moving to, uh, to get a little bit of separation from the United States, but also maximally leverage the benefits that you have from the United States. The, the Americans living in Nicaragua combination is one of the best that you can get around the world. So I encourage you to consider that as well, as long as you can have uh, as long as you can handle warm tropical weather which is what we have here thanks for joining me like and subscribe i'll see you all tomorrow